Hello planty people, welcome back to my channel this evening and I'm sorry for the wobbly tripod, it will settle down in a second. <laughs> now it is late at my house so I'm going to have to be a little bit quiet so I'm sorry if you can't hear me as well. I will do my best to speak clearly but not too loudly. Mrs Murphy. He keeps trying to knock the camera over. So if there's sudden stops, that's why. Look at him now. He's so cute. Hi, buddy. <laughs> anyway, tonight I am here to do a little video about String of Turtles. Now, I wasn't going to do this video right now, but I am posting off uh, a load of these turtles in a plant trade on Monday. And I wanted to film them before I sent them. So this is the only option because I'm busy. <laughs> so this video is going to be a video about how I care for and how I propagate string of turtles. Murphy. Okay, kick the cat out because apparently I can't work with anyone around. <laughs> Anyway, so um, as I was saying, this video will be about how I care for and how I propagate string of turtles after I have spent quite a few months accidentally killing them. Now, I love string of turtles. Uh, they are a form of peperomia. I can't say the technical name properly. So here it is on screen. <laughs> Um, they are a form of peperomia, but they are a little less hardy than some of their siblings. Um, I find peperomias are usually really, really easy, and um, string of turtles are a little bit harder. Um, I'm not sure if it's maybe my city and where I live, or if they're just a hard plant, but I have seen on Facebook, in groups, online, etc., that... Um, people have said that they're quite a tricky plant and that has been a little bit of my experience. I have killed three of them or so before I finally got it right. So what I'm going to be talking about today is what I now do for them and how I now take care of them. Of course this may not work for everybody and it may not work for everyone in every city however this is what works for me. Now I live in a city that gets quite dry uh, it has pretty extreme temperature changes. It goes from uh, 40 degrees in summer right down to minus 10 in winter. I'm talking about degrees Celsius, by the way. If you don't know the conversions, you can Google it. <laughs> um, so I get quite dramatic temperature changes in my city and it does get quite dry. So that can be quite an adjustment, uh, especially for a plant like a string of turtles, peperomia, that does need quite particular um, care from what I've experienced. So today I will be talking, um, let's put some timestamps on the screen. Um, so I will be talking about how I care for them, which will include soil, uh, it will include how I water them, it will include what pests you need to look out for, and um, it will include what temperature ranges you want to keep them in. And then when I talk about propagating, I will be discussing how to propagate a string of turtles from a stem cutting, and how to propagate a string of turtles from a leaf single leaf one single leaf yes it can be done <laughs> um and yeah so let's jump into it let's jump straight into care so how i care for my string of turtles now this really did take a little bit for me to go right soil i almost had down packed from the beginning so soil is the first thing i'm going to discuss because it's the first thing that i got correct now, because it's dark and nighttime and wet and raining, I'm not going outside to get you a handful of my soil mix to show you on the video. However, if you've watched my soil video, or you would like to watch my soil video, it's in the description below. Um, and what I have used here is basically my Calathea sort of philodendron area mix but with a little extra of the cocoa core moss 
repeat stuff. So what it is, is it's quite a heavy mix of cocoa core. Um, it has orchid bark, perlite, charcoal, and a, like a bit of my cacti succulent mix, which is a Debco brand bag mix. So it is quite water retaining, moisture retaining, quite chunky, but not as chunky as I would go for a philodendron um, or a calathea. It's a little bit more loamy or a little bit more kind of not compact, but um, not as chunky. So not as much orchid bark, not as many of those um, big chunks of charcoal. It's a little bit more condensed because the root system of a peperomia string of turtles is very, very delicate and very, very small. So when you buy your string of turtles and you pull it out and you're repotting it and it has almost no roots, totally normal. Don't stress. That's just what they are. They're weird kind of plants. Someone described them. I was talking to and they said it's like a little toupee that just kind of sat on top. Pretty much they don't have extensive root systems. They're traditionally tree climbers and so they kind of latch on up high and they don't really have a root system to speak of. So you don't want something that's su super chunky because you're not trying to encourage dense root growth. You need something for it to cling on to. So when I'm using my soil, I use something that is a little denser um, and a little less chunky so it's got something to cling on to. So I'm just going to show you a bit close up of this. This is my current happiest, healthiest string of turtles. Um, this string of turtles is a couple of months old now and I've repotted it into that soil mix and it has done exceptionally well since I've done that. Um, it came in a terrible mix of like really solid peat moss which is very common for string of turtles that grow in like that a lot because it retains a lot of moisture. Um, the thing about them is that they like a moist soil but they need to have that drainage but they can't, they don't like being ridiculously dry, but they can handle drying out a bit. So you want a soil that's going to retain a nice amount of moisture, but isn't going to stay soggy. Um, so that's soil. Um, all right. So off from soil onto watering. So watering a string of turtles, I have noticed that they can handle a low amount of water. They can handle being quite thirsty. However, they do benefit from having access to a nice amount of water. Um, and what I mean when I say that is I have noticed that you would have seen here, I've had a lot of really good success with self-watering pots. So um, string of turtles, uh, they have, I'll get it right up close for you to have a look. They have these big fleshy leaves, which as you can tell, they retain a lot of moisture. So you can see it's holding water. It's very full. It's very shiny. It's almost like a little sack of water, a little water droplet on top of a leaf. Um, and that's what makes them quite beautiful. Is it going to catch properly? I'll just move my face so you can see the plant. <laughs> um, so these leaves hold moisture quite easily so they can be very prone to rot which is one concern you really have with the string of turtles so you want to make sure you're never over watering it so that's where I found these self watering pots have been very very successful this is also a self watering pot um, have been very very successful with my string of turtles because I am getting the water ratio right for a change they are a lot thirstier than I gave them credit for um, it is summer at the moment, so of course they're going to be thirstier. We've had a bit of a heat wave, but, um, in the month and a half, two months, I've had it in this pot. This plant has almost doubled in size. Um, if you go check out my Instagram, uh, Empress's Lady Garden, there is comparison photos of about a month apart of this plant. In fact, I'll pop them on the screen right now. that's those um, you can see that there is quite a difference in just a very short time 
So they have also become fatter. Like these leaves are now the size of my finger, which is really impressive to me. These leaves have gotten so big and so full and so happy from the amount of water that they're getting from this self-watering pot. So what I do is I've got the reservoir in the bottom of the pot here. You can see it's currently empty, but at the moment this feels quite heavy still, which means that it's drunk up all the water and all the water is still <clears throat> excuse me, all the water is still in the soil. The soil has retained quite a lot of water. So in a day or two, when that pot feels a bit light to lift up, I'm going to fill the reservoir again up to about here. Excuse me, string. <laughs> I'm going to fill the reservoir again up to about here. And when it's drunk it all up, I'll repeat the process of letting it dry out just a little tiny bit in between waterings and then giving it the water reservoir again to drink from because yeah I have found that during the summer growing months these plants can be quite thirsty um, but are very prone to overwatering so the self watering pot is a really safe way I have found to avoid that overwatering problem so if you're having a bit of problems getting their water ratio right this might work for you again this whole video is literally just after me accidentally killing multiple strings of turtles. This is what I've found is working for me now. So it might work for you if, been, if you've been struggling. If you're someone who's doing the going, but my string of turtles is fantastic. Girl, this video is not for you. This video is for all the people going, yeah, I've killed four of them too and I love them, but what do I do next? <laughs> so try a self-watering pot. I got this on eBay for very little money. You can make them yourself if you really want to, um, but I'm a pretty, you know, whatevs. I also like the clear because I can see it. This one, I, you know, it annoys me a little bit that I can't see it and I have to lift it up. I can't see straight through the plastic, but it is cute, so, and it was cheap. <laughs> um, but this one, I like that I can see the water reservoir. I can see where it's at. This string has gotten so long and it's so cute. Look how cute it is. Look at that. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's my watering routine personally with the strings of turtles is I wait for them to tell me they're thirsty by filling up that water reservoir and letting them go for their life. So in winter, obviously, I'm going to be putting a let less water in here and letting it dry out just a little bit more because winter watering, they're going to need a lot less water than they are right now in the thirst of summer. Um... Now, this one's only just been converted into this pot, so it's still growing at the moment, but hopefully in a couple of weeks it will be as lush and full as this one, at least start to look, right? Like, it's going to be far off, but it'll get there. <laughs> Alright, so that's enough rambling about watering. I, I think you get my point that personally I'm having a lot of luck with the self-watering pots. If you do have it in another pot, just make sure it's getting watered regularly, but not so regularly that it's rotting, um, which might sound vague, but the problem is it can vary from where you are and your climate and your city and your internal house temperatures, etc, etc, etc. So you kind of just have to just learn what the plant needs, which sounds a little wanky, doesn't it? It just sounds a bit wanky. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you've got it in a pot that's not self-watering, I'd say water it until it runs through when the pot feels light, if that makes sense. So I like to have my plants in, have I got one behind me that I can show you easily? Um, yes, there you go. I like to have my plants in a plastic pot inside a decorative pot. And the reason I do that is because I can walk around and be like, oh, yep, yeah, she's not super light yet. I don't need to water her. Um, and then if it's feeling ridiculously light, it's really, really time to give it a good deep soak. So that's a really good way to go with strings of turtles, if you're a bit unsure, um, is to, you know, just try that method if you're not willing to use a self-watering pot. But I am having a lot of luck with the self-watering pot. So that's my two cents on watering a string of turtles, which I have just spoken about for like five minutes. So let's move on. <laughs> Next is light. 
And yes, I am looking down at my note sheet next to my foot here. <laughs> um, now, for light of string of turtles, they do like quite a bit of light. They do enjoy um, a decent amount of light. They don't want to have extreme direct hot afternoon sun however they are a tropical rainforest plant they are going to fry if you put them in full-on direct afternoon sun they're just not going to handle it all right so don't do it however both of mine get full morning sun like five hours four or five hours of full morning sun and they love it so they can handle a nice amount of light as long as it's the right type of light so if you're getting very 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 tiny little turtles and they're not getting as big, even though they've got a sufficient amount of water, they might not be getting enough light. Um, so morning sun is personally my preference with them. So put them in a window that gets a nice amount of morning light. They also do quite well under grow lights because they can be gentle enough, but consistent enough, if you know what I mean. Like, so a grow light, let me just move you away from the pet food bin there behind me. Let's have a nicer look. That's better framing. Why didn't I do that before? <laughs> um, so they do enjoy good bright light. So stop wobbling, please. <laughs> so I have had a lot of luck with them under grow lights when it comes to propagating and the likes. So I assume that if they're very, very, very happy to propagate under grow lights, then they're probably very happy to live under them as well, right? You'd think, logically, just as a guess. <laughs> so that's really it on light. Light's pretty basic for them. Um, they're not a low light plant. They're not one that you can stick in a super dark corner and they'll be great, because they probably won't. Like, they might survive, but I wouldn't do it, personally. Morning sun. <laughs> they can handle being out in an outdoor area as long as they're getting the other conditions correct um, because as long as they're not getting that harsh afternoon sun so I do want to trial some on my patio um, in summer only they'll have to come inside in winter because it gets way too cold here and they'll get they'll just die but I'll talk about that more later <laughs> but yes that's light light you want to get nice good bright either direct morning or indirect for the rest of the day. Um, yeah, so let's move on to the other things. All right, so pests. Now, um, pests with my string of turtles, personally, I haven't had any major issues yet, which is good. They don't, like I've had other plants around them have problems and they haven't caught on as heavily. However, given the structure of the plant and the type of leaf structure they are and the type of plant they are, I feel like they would be quite susceptible to mealybugs and to bugs that like to hide in amongst, you know, delicate foliage, which we have a lot of, a lot of here. Um, so with most of my pests, I treat um, with hydrogen peroxide and alcohol in a spray bottle, quite watered down quite watered down um so if you notice some pests that's an option i also find this works for fungus gnats so if you have fungus gnat soil problem um pour the solution through the soil so you're looking at three percent hydrogen peroxide um change these ratios if you are using a different percent of hydrogen peroxide so you want uh 50 percent three percent uh actually less than that here let me just put Here's the recipe of my spray. <laughs> um, so that's that. And that's what I spray on and I'll spray it on the top side and the underside. If there's any extreme infestation, I'll remove that section and just bin it because it's honestly not worth fighting that fight. If you have a lot of plants and you find like a bad leaf, just chuck it out. It's so not worth trying to save one or two leaves versus your whole collection. So if I had like a whole strand that was heavily infested, I'd just probably, if I couldn't just easily remove it, I'd, I'd easily remove the pest that is, I'd easily remove the strand. Um, it's just not worth it in the end sometimes. I just am so done with pests. I'm having spider mite issues still, if you've been following. <laughs> anyway. 
So that's pests on your string of turtles. Um, they are going to be susceptible to almost any sort of indoor pest, but um, you know, just be be careful with them. They do have these delicate little fronds that you need to check underneath and make sure you are very careful with them because they do break off easily. All right, um, now let's let get on to the last section for care, and that's just the other stuff. <laughs> So when I say the other stuff, I mean uh, temperature and humidity mostly. So temperature wise, these uh, tropical plants, like I've mentioned a few times, they do not like to get cold. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And I feel them. I feel you babies, I understand. So that's why I was saying I struggle with them a little bit in my city because it does get really cold where I live. Um, so if it gets really, really cold where you live, you really want to temperature control these babes. You really do. So you don't want them to get below probably around 12 degrees Celsius. Um, 12 to 15 is the comfortable lowest temperature. Like they will survive at a lower temperature than that, but they're not going to do very well for very long. So that's just kind of a thing you need to keep in mind when caring for these over winter. Now I'm just going to pause because my phone charger, my phone is dying. Mm. Alright, so I'm back. Um, as I was saying, so temperature wise they can get up to quite warm temperatures. They don't mind being hot. So if you live in a nice hot tropical area, these are a pretty good plant for you. Uh, so, you know, I have them all the way up to 30. 40 degrees Celsius and they do not care at all they're very happy um, it's the cold temperatures that are going to be a problem for your turtles and that's what you want to watch out for um, and yeah so and on that note humidity they don't mind a bit of humidity at all in fact they much prefer it they're not gonna do very well below about 50 40 percent any lower than that they're really gonna start to suffer so you really want to keep them 60% humidity is pretty much ideal for these. They don't mind at all being more humid than that. So um, anywhere up to 70, 80%, they can handle it very, very well, um, as long as they're not being severely overwatered. So that's something to watch out for. They're very happy for misting. If you're somebody who likes to mist your plants, a string of turtles is very happy to be misted. So I think that's everything as far as care goes. So I'm going to pause and move things around and come back with tips on propagation. This is editing Empress slipping in right now because I realized I forgot to mention fertilizer. Uh, so here is a very quick editing note um, about feeding. I water feed my turtles um, through the self-watering system about once a month, sometimes every two to three weeks, depending if I remember, with a general sort of liquid food, whatever I happen to have lying around at the time. So yeah, that's fertilizer. So firstly, I wanted to show you my very happy, very successful propagation containers that I have going of my turtles here at the moment. And I'm actually posting uh, this container here off as part of a plant trade on Monday morning. Um, look at all those turtles. Aren't they just the cutest things you've ever seen? And so um, that's why I've been prompted to do this video now because I wanted to talk about them before I posted them off um, because I'm so impressed with how they look. If you watch my Water Baby Wednesday propagation series you would have seen these at the start and how they were just trays of single leaves. And so that's what I'm gonna talk about first is leaf propagation. So um, if you propagate often and you've had peperomias before, you will know that you can propagate a peperomia from a single leaf. So I had the fair assumption that you could do the same thing for these because at the end of the day, they are just another form of peperomia. And it turns out I was correct. <laughs> So what I did is I have a dish here that has a mix of cacti mix and perlite in the bottom layer. And then it has a layer of sphagnum moss over the top. And then I simply placed the leaves out in a success 
succession sort of pattern, um, a nice even pattern with plenty of spacing. I will put up on the screen now a photo of what this looked like at the start. Um, so that's what they looked like. They were dishes of just ling the single leaves laid out neatly across the moss. I kept this moss moist with a spray bottle every few days depending as needed. Um, never letting it dry out too much. A couple of times it did get a little crispy but um, I managed to get to it in time and it wasn't too bad. But they did seem perf you know, fairly okay with that drying out once or twice in between um but i have tried to keep the moist moss the moss moist anybody who hates that word is cringing right now but i'm sorry there is no other word slightly damp damp it's damp better than moist i don't know tell me in the comments how much which one do you hate more <laughs> um anyway so you keep the moss slightly watered and <laughs> with a spray bottle and I kept it covered with the lid of the container with a couple of holes sort of cut into it, stabbed into it. I attempted to cut and then the container kind of broke, but it's fine. It's a bit of ventilation. That's all you need. So um, I kept that lid on there to help that humidity cycle, but a little bit of air holes so that it ventilated a little bit. Um, over the process of, you know, the time that these were growing I did lose a few leaves uh probably 10 to 15 percent of the leaves that I laid in this dish didn't succeed like it really wasn't that many that died a couple of leaves shriveled up and kind of went mushy and I just picked them out as I noticed them and threw them away and then otherwise it was amazing success I cannot believe how many of these leaves struck up as plants like look at that you can see the mummy leaves in the base there, the big full ones, and then all these baby strings have just come off. I'm just, I'm amazed. So this took, oh, months. Honestly, it took months. I did start them in the colder season and they have just taken off now. So I would recommend doing this in growing season, which is spring to summer for string of turtles. I wouldn't recommend starting these in winter like I did, but I did have them on a grow pad under grow lights in very warm areas of my house so that they stayed warm but they have only started to do very very well in the summer months um but it can be done if you are patient and you are very happy to wait and you are happy to just pluck a whole bunch of leaves off your turtles you could end up with this many plants like I am going to have to repot these soon, but some of these strings are so long, um, you can kind of see it through the edge of the container there. Like, there is so much plant growth in this container. Um, I'm so impressed by it. And so when I repot this, um, the next step will be to repot it. When I do that, I'm going to very carefully um, lift the entire moss segment out um, by kind of going under the side here and lifting it out flat um, and kind of sliding it out kind of sideways flat onto a surface. I'm then going to attempt to remove as much of the moss from underneath as possible, but I'm probably not going to be able to get all of it. And then I'm going to just start placing it on top of a pot. Uh, I might try and do a video of that specifically because it's going to be a bit of a challenge and it's going to take a bit of time and this video is getting long enough as it is so if you'd like to see a specific video of me repotting this container of turtles that I'm keeping for myself then um please let me know in the comments and I will film a video specifically of just repotting this propagation tub of turtles um yeah so that's propagating turtles from a single leaf so you want to pop it into some sphagnum moss um at least that's what i had success with you could probably do it with um other forms of propagating moss i don't know how well it would go with perlite or the likes because i think it really likes having the organic material to grip onto um whereas perlite doesn't really have 
that kind of ability because they do have such a shallow root system it needs something to kind of grow into perlite you can't really grow into so i would suggest working with um sphagnum moss or even the cocoa core seed raising moss might work um i'd have to try that myself personally if you want to experiment with that go for it and please tell me how you go because i'd be super interested to hear this is what worked for me but yeah, if you're interested in propagating from single leaves, this is how you do it. In moss with humidity, nice constant humidity from having the lid on, keeping that moss nice and moist, keeping it in a very well lit area. So I had these under grow lights um, specifically, but you could have them in morning sun. Be careful again with the afternoon sun, especially in the container, you don't want them to cook. But um, somewhere they're going to get nice, bright, indirect light or good, nice, bright morning light or grow lights. Grow lights are just your friend when it comes to propagation. Um, yeah, so that's how I propagate my string of turtles from leaves. And next I'm going to talk about how to propagate your string of turtles from a cutting. As in, like, a strand cutting. So I'm not actually going to cut this, I'm just going to use it as an example, which is why I've kept it here. Now if I was to propagate this strand here as a cutting, um, what I would do is I would find somewhere that it's got um, more segment, like here it must have lost a leaf or stretched a little bit at one point. So I would cut it somewhere along here probably here above this leaf here. So I would cut it there. I would then pluck off that leaf and probably those two leaves there as well so that you have quite a nice strand here. I'd then let that cutting dry out for 12 hours or so, six to 12 hours. And then I would personally I am propagate that in water until it had a few roots and was ready to plant. The other option is with that strand cutting, you can lay it on the sphagnum moss the same way you would a leaf cutting in um, a container or a mini greenhouse setup like I did with my leaf cuttings. So it will propagate like that. The other option is you could just stick it straight in a pot um, once you've cut those ends off. But you want to be careful with that. That is going to be a slightly riskier method. Um, and personally, I don't find doing that as successful. But in theory, it works. So that's your other option. So you want to cut a decent strand. Like, I personally wouldn't cut, like, there, really. If you're going to cut a strand cutting, you may as well try and get a decent strand to it. The, the, the longer, the better. Um... And then you want to try and strip a little bit off so that you have something to stick in your pot to propagate, to water prop, however you choose to do it. If you do choose to do it on moss, just kind of spiral it around on top of the moss and do it the same way that I've described doing a leaf cutting. But yeah, they're very easy to propagate. Um, just want to make sure that they're not getting too wet because again, they are susceptible to rot because they have this delicate little stem and these very water heavy leaves, 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 little leafies. <laughs> so there you have it. That's my little video on how I care for and propagate and uh, just a little bit of a rant because I really love them. Like look how cute they are. These are seriously one of my favorite plants. I am so glad that I finally learned how to take care of them because um, they're just so cute and so rewarding and I really do just I love them I love them so much look at it <laughs> um anyway yeah so that's my little video on the infamous beautiful stunning rewarding adorable string of turtles peperomia um I hope that this video helps you um if it's a plant you've been struggling with like I did for a little while I'm just really glad that I've got the hang of it now um, and I plan to have them everywhere now that I know how to take care of them. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, thanks for watching. Please check out my Instagram 
and my Facebook and, you know, like and subscribe and do all those boring things that make YouTube like me more. And I'm sorry I've disappeared for so long. I will explain everything in Water Baby Wednesdays this week, which I will be getting back to finally um, after a big holiday season hecticness. And uh, thanks for sticking with me and thanks for watching this. And I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I covered everything. If there's something I haven't covered, please let me know in the comments and I will answer your question if I can. Um, and yeah. Enjoy a close-up of my beautiful turtles. Thanks for watching. Keep growing like your plants. Bye.